Perfect. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming out today, and thank you to Senator Beach uh, for this incredibly important uh, piece of legislation that brought us all together uh, today on a, on a snowy day uh, in Atlanta. My name is Nick Giuliano. I'm a lifelong resident of the metro Atlanta region, uh, and I'm a proud uh, current resident, uh, and I am the president of Advance Atlanta. We are a group of residents from across the metro region who are united in believing that the future of the metro area will be greatly served by making strategic investments right now, right here, in a comprehensive regional transit system that links us all together. Now, what does that exactly mean? As a resident of Metro Atlanta, we believe that you should be able to get from one end of the region to another efficiently and within a reasonable amount of time to be able to do what you need to do. Go to work, access a job, access the resources that you need, visit friends and family. You should be able to do that through a world-class transit system, and that's exactly what brings us all here today. Heavy rail is an integral part of that equation. It's also one that we must spend a great amount of time on if we are going to work together to keep this region as competitive as it possibly can be. And that's really why we're here today. Now, many of us are young professionals who, whether we were born here or whether we moved here later in life, we want to make Metro Atlanta our home for life. Raise a family here. Be residents. We are vested in our communities and we are vested in the success of these communities because we are going to be here for decades to come. Now, you don't need to be a, uh, a young professional or a millennial to be a champion of transit at all. Uh, as, the Metro, as the Metro Atlanta Chamber's recent poll uh, showed us very recently, and they can speak to that uh, more capably than I can maybe later. Uh, offhand, I can tell you that my own grandmother talks all the time, and she lives up in the northern suburbs. She says that she'd love to be able to hop a train to go down to the airport to pick up my cousins when they come in town. Uh, now let's talk about these pieces of legislation, Senate Bill 313 and Senate Bill 330. These bills enable the residents of Fulton and DeKalb counties to have a say in the future of our region. The voters of these two counties, and I'm a Fulton resident myself, should be able to decide whether or not they would like for MARTA Heavy Rail to be extended up 400 through Sandy Springs and Alpharetta, through the Clifton Corridor over towards Emory, and through, uh, down to the southeast across I-20 to, uh, to Stonecrest Mall. Such an expansion will be an enormously positive impact on our economy as a whole, and in particular on the communities which, which will now be serviced. I'll let Mr. Toro speak aptly to that in a few moments. But before I turn it over to Senator Beach here in a second to talk about the legislation more, uh, I want to respond to some recent uh, statements from Senator Albers, the committee chairman of the State and Local Government Committee, uh, which were made last week. Uh, now, he's a skeptic of MARTA expansion, and I'd like to uh, address his remarks directly in the aim of the fruitful uh, and diplomatic dialogue that we strive for every day here at the Georgia Capitol. Uh, with respect to his words last week, uh, when he said that we need short-term and meaningful short-term solutions rather than MARTA rail uh, extension, which is, of course, a very long-term idea, uh, that's a categorization with which uh, I respectfully disagree and with which the people gathered before us here today disagree as well. Respectfully, for too long we have been kicking the can down the road on transit. That's why traffic and congestion consistently rank as the top complaints of Metro Atlanta residents. Now today we're here to gather to urge our lawmakers to come together to make long-term decisions that are based not on short-term planning at all, but rather on long-term investments that will pay off for decades and indeed generations to come. No one here, with respect to some past comments, is trying to turn Alpharetta or Johns Creek into Kirkwood or Five Points with respect to density. Rather, what we are doing is advocating for options and for the people to have the options to connect the people of the metro area to the economic opportunities that we need for the future. What's more, most of the $8 billion that, have been, that are going to be raised to support this expansion are not coming from taxpayers. It's coming through bonding and through matching federal money. MARTA Heavy Rail Access will be a boon to all of the diverse communities that we are blessed to have in the metro region. When looking decades ahead, whether one is looking to live here in downtown Atlanta, up in Sandy Springs where I'm from originally, or down by Stonecrest, we know from looking across the nation at who's competitive right now, and we know from asking the voices in this room here today that transit access matters very, very heavily in the equation of where we want to live, work, and play. That's exactly why the residents of Fulton and DeKalb counties deserve a vote on this issue and why we're gathered here today. I'll now turn things over to Senator Beach. Thank you. Nick, um, <laughs> Nick, thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for Advanced Atlanta. appreciate you being here and you all's support. Um, media, thank you all for being here and all the supporters and Mark Toro. Uh, 
I introduced Senate Bill 330 because we have a lot of momentum in the transportation world right now. We passed House Bill 170. That's a billion dollars of state money to get projects out there faster and quicker on the road projects. We also have P3s going on, the North by Northwest Corridor, South on 75, and then recently announced we're going to do the Georgia 400 285, and it came in over $300 million under projected cost. And I just think we need to capture that momentum and seize that momentum to now address transit in our region. We will never be a world-class region if we don't address transit in the metro Atlanta area. And um, I want to tell you that uh, I think we have to invest in our infrastructure. Uh, and I think one of the reasons I'm doing it is two reasons. One, for our citizens. When I first moved here, I would get on Georgia 400 by 730 and I'd be able to move. Now, if I'm not on Georgia 400 by 10 till 6, I can't even get on the entrance to the to Georgia 400. So we have to do something. We're, we're victims of our own success, which is great. We have traffic. That means we're successful and we have jobs. But let me tell you what I've seen. I've, I've been in economic development for 15 years with the Chamber of Commerce. And 15 years ago, the CEOs made the decision of where they were going to relocate that company based on where they wanted to live. So if they wanted to live in Golf Club of Georgia, they were going to Windward. If they wanted to live in Sugarloaf, they were going to Gwinnett County. You fast forward to today, that CEO is still making the decision, but he's making that decision based on where the talent is. And if the talent is living in Midtown or on the Beltline, those companies are going there. And I want to tell you that I, I learned from, you know, firsthand example, Athena Healthcare, 600 jobs in Alpharetta. Their employees could not take it anymore and were not coming up Georgia 400. That company relocated to Ponce Market. The CEO still lives up there, but he went where his talent was. And we've got to invest in, in, this, in this transit. And I'll just tell you this. We're not raising taxes. We're flexing the half, pen, uh, half of the penny that was allocated in the SPLOS on House Bill 170. So we're not going over the cap. We're not raising taxes. And the voters will have the final say. It'll go to the county commission. Then they'll put it on the ballot, and if the voters uh, pass it, then we will invest in infrastructure. Eight billion dollars worth of infrastructure would be the largest uh, infrastructure projects ever built in this state. And I want to end on this before I turn it over to Mr. Toro. This isn't for Brandon Beach. This is for my kids and my grandkids. I'll be at the beach when it's all said and done and beat, <laughs> built. But, but I will tell you also, and this will be the final thing I say, the people are ahead of the politicians on this issue. The people want this. The polling proves it. So appreciate you being here, and we're going to continue to fight the fight to make sure we make uh, Metro Atlanta the uh, number one place to do business, the state of Georgia the number one place to do business in the United States, and we're going to continue that trend by investing in infrastructure. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Mark Toro. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, my name is Mark Toro, managing partner of North American Properties. Uh, we are the recent acquirer of Colony Square. We are the developer and owner of Avalon, and recently uh, we're responsible for the turnaround of Atlantic Station. Uh, very keen on where the world is headed relative to um, commercial real estate users specifically and economic development generally. To echo uh, Brandon's comments about how decisions are being made today in the economic development world, uh, it is incumbent upon every CEO to recruit, retain, and engage the best and the brightest in, the, in whatever business they are in. And what we're seeing today is a sea change in how those decisions, those location decisions are made. The, bird, the, the canary in the coal mine, I think, was State Farm when they decided to locate on the Dunwoody Station in Sandy Springs and actually went to Keith Parker and asked him if they could locate a station inside their lobby unheard of in Metro Atlanta for a major employer to locate their, their headquarters on a MARTA station, much less seek immediate access. NCR, WorldPay, Athena Health, as, as Brandon mentioned, all decided to, uh, to uh, abandon their suburban uh, campuses and move in town to a great extent because their talent is, is in urban environments or seeks access to transit. Pulte, Mercedes-Benz, other relocations into the Georgia market are being assessed on whether or not access is available by other options than single occupancy vehicles. It is a critical component to our economic vitality and our ability to compete with other regions for us to continue to advance transit. 
We are well behind the curve. If you look at the recent, uh, there was a post in Creative Loafing recently that showed the transit systems of, of cities, I'll call them lesser cities, smaller cities, Denver, Portland, uh, others that have grown much faster than we have because we've been stuck in, in idle as other cities have overtaken us relative to, the, to providing transit. Uh, Brandon mentioned his personal experience with Georgia 400. My daughter lives in Old Fourth Ward and she commutes to Alpharetta. <laughs> Uh, I can tell you that on any given day, it can be an hour and a half commute coming back from Alpharetta into town. On, and, and the, but the fact is, she is not moving to Alpharetta. She is going to live in the Beltline. She's going to live the lifestyle that many of her peers and millennials seek. And those, re, those employers are going to come find that talent. So in order, I don't know if anybody read Maria Supporta's column this morning, but I think her headline was, in order to remain competitive, Georgia must invest in transit and MORTA. I couldn't say it better. Uh, thank you very much. Now we'll take some questions. Anybody have questions? Yes. I mean, I think we just stated it pretty clearly that, that the C it's a box the CEOs now have to check off. Mercedes-Benz, a car company, said it was important for them to have transit for their employees. So just like a LEED certified building, they got to check that box. Transit is a component when it comes to economic development. And if Georgia 400, if we want to continue to be the, the economic engine that we are, I think we're going to have to invest in transit. But the leaders in this building, history says it, do not want the state to invest right. in MARTA. That's one this does not have state investment in it. This but is the still county. This, this, you know, fight against well, the turning. The tide's let, turning. Let me tell you, the tide is turning, and, and Marta, Keith Parker, and the leadership at Marta, Robbie Ash, and his board, they deserve a lot of credit. In three years, they've run a surplus. Uh, they're doing a great job. They're adding Wi-Fi in the tunnels. He said he'll have that done in 18 months. They're adding artwork in the stations. They've cut out the knucklehead behavior. They've got the Uber last mile. MARTA is doing a good job. Can they get better? Yes, we can all get better, but they're doing a good job. They're on the right track. And I would say this to you, Lori. When I was elected in 1999 on city council, I used to bash both Grady and I bash MARTA. I don't bash Grady anymore. Tom Bell, Pete Carell, Bernie Marcus have done a great job. And so is Keith Parker, and it's time we give him a chance and let, let's invest in it to grow it in, for the future. Uh, Brandon, can you tell us about the arrangement that's been worked out to get the bills through because of a little bit of confusion? Well, uh, there was an arrangement. I uh, wanted the bill to be in transportation, not SLOGO, because I don't think it's a local bill. A local bill is when you uh, make an adjustment in a city charter or you're looking at salaries for judges or something to that nature not an $8 billion transportation investment. So I asked uh, Senator Albers to move it to uh, uh, transportation, and he has agreed, and he will move that on Thursday. He did want to have his hearing because he'd already had it scheduled, so we agreed to have the hearing today at 2 o'clock. Then it will move to transportation, and Senator Chairman Williams will give me a hearing hopefully on Thursday on Senate Bill 330. So that's where we're at on the, the bill. Yes. Anything else? Opposition in Cobb and Gwinnett, is that uh, waning? What do you well, listen, that's up to Cobb and Gwinnett what they want to do. I'm all for regional transit. I would like to have all five big counties play in the same sandbox. We can't force that. They have to come willing. Um, I, I will tell you, I do think if this goes forward, and they'll be 10 to 12 to 15 years behind Fulton and DeKalb as far as the Georgia 400 corridor. So maybe this will put a little pressure on them to, to, to maybe join the join the party, if you will. I will tell you, I took a ride from uh, Kennesaw State to the Gwinnett Arena, 32 miles, and it took me four hours and 10 minutes. I had it filmed, it was on YouTube. And it just showed the dysfunction, because we, and, and all those systems work good, but they're, they're fragmented. They don't communicate and they don't collaborate. Each system was clean, safe, and ran well, but I had to wait 30 minutes in between. I had to go to three websites to plan the trip. I had to pay with three different methods. We will never attract lifestyle riders if we do that. We have to make it easy for lifestyle riders to want to get out of their car and not wait four hours to, to get 32 miles. Senator, as part yes. of the agreement, um, if the bill were to get to the Senate, um, is, is it, am, I, am I correct that it would be 
the full Republican body voting as one, one group for that to get out of the Senate? No, we would not engross the bill or anything like that. We'd want to have some Republican support, and we're going to get some Republican support. So uh, not all Republicans are against this. Uh, you know, I'm not going to speak for the lieutenant governor, but in his the last eight months that he's given speeches, he has talked about transit in his speeches. So that's I'm not you know, putting any words in his mouth. I've been to his speeches where I've heard him talk about transit. I just don't think that will happen. I think it'll, you know, we'll work, we're working on roads, on the uh, ancillary roads, on the ar ar arteries. So, and with House Bill 170, we're going to be able to get roads built faster using state funding. So I think you'll see the roads in these other areas be built faster and quicker now that we've weaned ourselves off of federal dollars. It's going to be about the connectivity issue. That, you know, oh, I would take more of them, but then I'm dropped out. I know Uber's involved now, but I'm dropped out you know, you have the Uber last mile, but I also think what you're going to see is CIDs. There's 21 CIDs in the metro area, and I think they're going to play a vital role in, in creating some commuter shuttle type, like the little vans you take on Park and Fly Plus. I think you're going to see some movement there and some investment there, and I think some cities working together to go to the job centers for that last mile or last, second last mile. Okay. Two comments? Yes. The first is if you haven't ridden MARTA, to ride with respect is really having an effect. And the second is when I used to work for a political campaign and would go out to Roswell, I kept hearing when I'm driving my car and the traffic breaks up at North Springs. So I made the switch. Thanks. Well, I want to again thank you all for coming. Mark, thank you for your comments. Nick, thank you for Advanced Atlanta. James, Thank you for Council on Quality Growth, and thank you for the media come. We have got to make some big, bold decisions, and this is big and bold, and we need to get behind this and, and bring uh, transit into the 21st century here in Metro Atlanta and continue to grow. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for coming.